Hello and welcome to another video. I thought I would do a little bit of an update on the Power Armor project as I haven't posted anything on it in about a month. The last video being the ballistic testing for the armor which needed a follow up video, which is where we'll start. So in that last video I came to the conclusion that I needed to make my own custom ceramic tiles for my suit of armor to make sure it all worked correctly and everything was the right thickness. Now you can buy quite fancy ceramic tiles these days, whether it's aluminium oxide tiles or silicon carbide tiles. But one, while they're not mega expensive, if you're making a full suit of them and you need roughly four square meters of them, they do get quite expensive at that margin. If you were just making a chest plate, for example, it wouldn't be so bad. But also I want to be able to make all of these things myself from scratch and ideally make them from resources in the United Kingdom. Which is why I've tried to stick to porcelain tiles because weirdly as well, we have really high quality porcelain in this country, which is rare because normally we have nothing. But this is where some delays started to creep in because I started to make my own ceramic tiles, which started to come out pretty damn well, as you can see here. These are all made with 3D printed molds. They're sized so that when they shrink down, they're the perfect size for the suit. They're around seven millimeters thick, all made of extremely high quality porcelain. And as you can see, I made quite a lot of them for test pieces. They've all come out really well. I could also even make half hexagon pieces so I always had a good line on the edge of them and you can see how well they've actually come out just using 3d printed molds pressing them in but I have had to abandon this annoyingly as I cannot get these kilned I don't know if pottery people are actually busy or if they're just lazy or what but I can't get any of these kilned I've tried for weeks to actually get them fired and actually hardened because these are just actually the clay you could break them apart it's also why you've got chalk on my hands there so I have had to abandon this, but I have now found an alternative. I've found some tiles that are manufactured in the UK using British porcelain that are high quality and of the right thickness. I've just got to cut them up into strips or into hexagons and fit them into the armor. That's not ideal to be honest. It's not what I wanted to do, but I've literally just had to give up on making my own tiles simply because I can't get them fired. But on the plus side, I've now got all of my test pieces ready to go. So next week I should be able to get these tested, see what the new pieces of armor stop, which also have an array of different materials added into them to complement that ceramic. Then I'll finally be able to get some armor laid into all of the 3D prints that we've made in previous videos. I have made these to use hexagonal pieces, but to be fair, if I end up cutting them into strips, it won't be too much of a problem. I'll still be able to get each individual ceramic piece tied up to each other as I've designed all of this to basically be made out of one-way curves in every direction. So you can see that's one-way curve, that's one-way curve. Even the knees actually just multiple one-way curves overlap together. So at least it's not a disaster not being able to use hexagonal pieces. The other thing that I've been working on in the meantime is actually finishing my own actuator design. This is something that's just required more focus on and it has meant that I haven't been able to do many other videos. So I really need to spend some time on this, try to get it right. Of which I do feel like we've got some progress on that and it's finally coming together. So we'll get properly into the actuator design in a video in the future, but basically I've been trying to make an actuator that doesn't have a gearbox, but maintains smooth rotation, has a decent power output, also can be made with limited tools, so no laser cutters or anything like that. I should be able to get this down to just being able to be made with a 3D printer and a bit of time. And I'm also aiming to get it to work with very basic electronics that you might be able to see the idea of here. I've been trying to spend a lot of time on this, trying to get this to work with basic electronics and get it to work well. Because whenever I think about the future of warfare, all I think is there's got to be a massive amount of electronic warfare used to basically counter drones. I feel like a lot of operations are going to have to be used under some form of EMP dome, some form of electronic countermeasures, which could interfere with data packets that go through, say, CAN bus lines. So I'm trying to make these actuators work with a basic form of electronics that basically can't be interfered with, which is why this design is kind of turned into a hybrid between a brushless motor and a brushed motor, which sounds backwards, but I do think it's coming along quite nicely and it's going to work pretty well. So I'm hoping to have a video on this in the next couple of weeks. I was hoping to have a video on this last week until I realized that I'd coiled all of these wires wrong. And it had only took me eight to 10 hours to coil all of this copper wire by hand myself. Didn't annoy me at all. 
But even though these delays are annoying, I should be able to get the suit built pretty soon. I'm now aiming for probably mid to end of September to actually complete the suit and be able to test it and use it. Once this next round of armor testing is done and the actuator is done, this all should really build together very quickly. So if you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video where we should have some decent testing and some good progress to show.